On a stormy autumn night, I sat on the couch in my old apartment, the sound of wind and rain making the night seem even more sinister. Occasional sounds of distant cars and dogs barking stood out starkly against the backdrop of the rain. As a freelancer, I usually work from home, which makes me somewhat introverted. Lately, due to the pressure from a big project, I've often had to work through the night, leaving my nerves perpetually on edge. My apartment is on the outskirts of the city, where the streets are quiet and pedestrian traffic is sparse. The apartment has a one-bedroom, one-living-room layout, with the living room leading to a small balcony. From the balcony, I can see sparse trees and old factory buildings in the distance. At night, the dim lighting adds to the feeling of isolation. One late night, as I was deeply focused on meeting a work deadline, a series of light and unusual footsteps came from the hallway outside my apartment. At this hour, the building was usually quiet, with most residents asleep. This sudden sound made me tense up. At first, I tried to ignore it, thinking it might be an upstairs neighbor returning home late. However, the footsteps did not disappear, instead, they became clearer and more rhythmic. Driven by curiosity and unease, I decided to temporarily put aside my work and head to the door. Standing behind the door, with my ear almost pressed against the cold surface, I tried to discern the source of the noises. Just as I was about to give up, the footsteps suddenly stopped, followed by an eerie silence. This unease led me to decide to install a peephole camera the next day, hoping to capture any activity in the hallway. Over time, I began to experience an indescribable fear. This fear made my breathing quicken and my palms sweat. I kept telling myself it might just be a misunderstanding, but my sense of unease grew stronger. In the following days, the footsteps became more frequent and were not limited to nighttime. Even one afternoon, I clearly heard someone lingering outside my door for several minutes. More disturbingly, I noticed that some small items had been subtly moved, like a pen on the table or the curtains drawn slightly. Several days later, on a stormy night, I was awakened by a series of urgent footsteps in the hallway. This time, the sound was clearer and filled with urgency, as if someone or something was moving quickly through the hallway. I quickly got out of bed, my heart racing, and a foreboding feeling enveloping me. I tiptoed to the door and looked through the newly installed peephole camera. The screen showed the hallway in black and white, everything seemed calm. Just as I was about to relax my guard, a blurry figure suddenly burst into view and then quickly disappeared from the camera's field of vision. This sudden appearance nearly made me scream, and I was gripped by fear. After taking a few deep breaths to calm my nerves, I decided to open the door and investigate. I slowly opened the door to find the hallway empty, with only the sound of wind and rain and the occasional flicker of lights. I could hardly believe my eyes, and a sense of being stalked by something unseen overwhelmed me. This incident completely shattered my sense of security in the apartment, and I seriously considered moving to escape these continual disturbances. In the days that followed, I invited a friend to stay with me, trying to uncover the reason behind these events. We checked every corner of the apartment and even installed more cameras, but we found nothing unusual. My life gradually returned to normal, but my vigilance remained. Although there were no more similar incidents, I still felt uneasy on some nights, occasionally looking back to check if there was something or someone peering at me. I began to wonder if all this was due to my own stress and tension causing hallucinations, or if there was something else I hadn't detected influencing me. This uncertainty and the unknown made me apprehensive about the future. I work at a gas station in the center of my town. My shifts aren't always the same, but I often find myself working overnights and early mornings. I'd been there for a year by this point, and honestly, 
I didn't have many complaints. It was a normal, mid-paying job that just required me to stand in one spot for eight hours and interact with the occasional customer. On this particular day, I was assigned an overnight shift from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Although it's usually not too busy overnight on weekdays, it's worth mentioning that it was raining a decent amount at night, so I was expecting it to be pretty quiet. The first couple of hours went by without incident. I sat behind the register, waiting for anyone to come in. I had a few customers who pay for gas with cash, but by around 12.30 or 1 a.m., it was dead, no customers coming inside, and barely anyone even getting gas outside. With absolutely no customers, I walked around the counter to start tidying up the shelves a bit. They weren't too messy, but it gave me something to do. As I was doing this, I had my back to the windows, but I noticed the glare of headlights through the store as someone pulled into the station. I didn't turn around because there was nothing interesting about it, just someone coming in to get gas. I continued straightening up the shelves for maybe 10 minutes or so before I glanced out the window unconsciously. The car was still there, parked by one of the pumps, with a man standing right next to it. As soon as I looked, the man turned away, making it obvious that he had been watching me. Feeling really weirded out, especially since they had supposedly been pumping gas for a whole 10 minutes, I went back to the counter. Then, checking out the window again 30 seconds later, I saw the man getting into his car. The headlights flashed a few times as if he was trying and failing to start it, but eventually, he got it running and drove away in a hurry. I stood there, looking out the window for a minute, feeling that something really wasn't right. I had an idea and pulled up the recent transactions for the pump he was at the last time it had been used was hours ago. He had been there for 10 minutes with no reason at all other than to watch me through the windows. I stayed behind the counter for a while, trying to just wait out the rest of my shift. A few more cars came and went, and then it got really quiet again. Around 3 a.m., I heard something outside. The rain was heavy, but a rhythmic shuffling noise on the ground was just barely audible through it footsteps, right along the side of the building, moving toward the back. I tried to look out the window, but there was no good view. However, I did notice that no cars were in the parking lot or by the pumps. I quickly left the counter and went to the back door, which was a heavy metal door with no windows or anything on it. I pressed my ear against it and listened as the footsteps got louder and louder until they were right on the other side of the door. My eyes moved to the handle, waiting in the silence before the handle turned slowly and slightly but got caught by the lock. It went quiet again. Almost a whole minute passed, then a man's voice grunted in frustration as a sudden sharp sound slid across the other side of the door. Footsteps followed soon after, leaving and going back to the side of the gas station. I ran back to the front, waiting to see them walking away but didn't get any sight of them. Acting quickly, I picked up the store phone and dialed 911, hoping they could catch him before he got too far. I didn't know what was really happening, but someone trying to get in through the back door had to have intended something bad. When the cops arrived, they didn't find the man, but what they did find was a car on the side of the road less than a quarter mile away, the same car I'd seen earlier with the man who had been watching me. It had run out of gas and had mismatching license plates, turned out to be a missing car from two states over. The other thing they found was a long scrape across the back door, made by a sharp metal object, likely a knife. Knowing all these details, I think I actually got extremely lucky, as the man was probably already on the run and could have been planning anything. I've always been a night owl using the quiet of the night to dive deep into my freelance graphic design projects. My small, fourth-floor apartment was my sanctuary, a cozy nest perched in an older, quieter part of the bustling city. From my large living room window, 
I could gaze down at the rain slick streets, the lights a soft blur in the drizzly autumn night. It was nearing 11.30 p.m. on a chilly Tuesday when my peaceful routine was shattered. The shrill ring of the apartment phone cut through the silence. I glanced at the clock, frowning. Who would call at this hour? With a reluctant hand, I picked up the receiver. Hello? I answered, my voice echoing slightly in the quiet room. Silence greeted me at first, then a click as the caller hung up. A prank? A wrong number? I shook my head, dismissing it, and turned back to my computer screen, immersed once again in my work. Minutes later, the phone rang again. This time, a whisper floated through the line, my name, Alex. Before the line went dead once more. Chills ran down my spine. This had to be some twisted joke. I peered through the peephole, but the hallway was empty, the only sound the distant hum of the city and the soft patter of rain against the window. My heart pounded in my ears as I tried to focus on my work, but the phone's ring became my tormentor, intermittent, unpredictable. The shadows of the night seemed to creep closer around me, and every little noise made me jump a testament to my growing fear. I decided to ignore the phone, but when my mobile vibrated with a text message, I jumped. Why didn't you answer, it read, from an unknown number. My hands streamed as I typed a response, who is this? There was no reply. As the night deepened, the calls became more frequent, the whispers more insistent. Shadows darted past my peephole, and faint footsteps echoed in the hallway. Was I losing my mind? Then came the photo, sent to my phone, a picture of me, taken from the street below earlier that night. I felt a scream rise in my throat. Someone was watching me, stalking me from the darkness. Enough was enough. With trembling hands, I called the police, my voice barely a whisper as I explained there was someone harassing me. Please hurry, I pleaded. I moved away from the windows, seeking refuge in my dimly lit living room, waiting for the police. The room felt colder, shadows lurking in every corner. I tried to convince myself that I was safe, that help was on the way. A message flashed on my phone. Look outside. I edged toward the window, peering through the blinds. A hooded figure stood under the streetlight, staring up at my apartment. My breath caught in my throat, the figure was pointing directly at me. Panic set in, and I stumbled back, knocking over a face. The crash seemed to echo through the apartment as the power flickered and went out, plunging me into darkness. My heart was pounding, my breath shallow and quick. The sound of the lock being tampered with sent me into overdrive. Grabbing a heavy flashlight, I barricaded myself in the bathroom, the only room without a window. The darkness was oppressive, suffocating. Footsteps in the apartment. Was I imagining it? I held my breath, listening. The steps were real, approaching the bathroom. I gripped the flashlight like a lifeline, ready to defend myself. Then, the sound of sirens cut through the night. Shouts echoed in the hallway, and I heard the police challenge someone. Relief washed over me, followed by a flood of tears. I waited until the police found me, locked in the bathroom, and told me it was safe. The hooded figure, a young man, was a suspect in a series of stalking incidents. He had mistaken me for someone else from his past. As I sat in the back of the ambulance, wrapped in a blanket, I watched them lead him away, his eyes empty and unseeing. The days that followed were a blur. The apartment felt alien to me, the shadows no longer friendly. I installed new locks and a security system, but the sense of violation lingered. Sleep was elusive, every noise, every shadow was a potential threat. 
I started sleeping with the lights on, the darkness now an enemy. The incident replayed in my mind, each detail sharp and vivid. I learned that the stalker had been watching me for days, his obsession a twisted echo of some lost love. The randomness of his fixation on me was a cold reminder of the dangers that lurked in the unseen corners of the world. As the weeks passed, I tried to reclaim my life, but the ease I once felt in my solitude was gone. Friends and family were supportive, but they couldn't erase the scars left by that night. I realized how fragile our sense of security is, how quickly it can be shattered by a stranger's obsession. The experience left me wary, more aware of the shadows that dance just out of sight. Now, I look back on that night as a turning point. I learned that fear could either cripple you or forge you into something stronger. I chose the latter. My nights are still filled with work, but now, they are also filled with caution, with the understanding that the darkness holds more than just the night's embrace. The call stopped, the stalker locked away, but the fear remained, a constant whisper in the back of my mind. I was a survivor, but also a reminder of the darkness that lives in the soul of the city and perhaps, in the heart of everyone. In the stillness of the night, I work, I watch, and I wait, knowing that safety is not guaranteed, but something we create, something we fight for in the silence between each heartbeat. Living in the heart of the city always gave me a sense of excitement and convenience, but it never prepared me for the chilling encounter that awaited me one quiet, unsettling night. I've always been a night owl, often returning home late from work or social gatherings, enjoying the solitude that the night brings in a city that never sleeps. That Saturday night was no different. After a fun evening with friends, I found myself walking back to my apartment around midnight. The air was cool, with a slight drizzle that made the city lights blur and twinkle in the distance. My apartment, a typical high-rise in the downtown area, stood quietly as I entered, nodding a brief hello to the night shift security guard who seemed engrossed in his phone. As I approached the elevator, I pressed the call button and waited. The hallway was eerily quiet, the only sound being the soft hum of the overhead lights. When the doors opened, I was startled to find someone already inside. A man in a dark coat, his face obscured by a hood, stood silently in the corner of the elevator. Something about him made me uneasy, but I chalked it up to the late hour and my own tiredness. Evening, I muttered, stepping inside and pressing the button for my floor. The man didn't respond or even move, which sent a shiver down my spine. I positioned myself near the elevator controls, trying to seem relaxed while keeping him in my peripheral vision. The elevator began its ascent, and the silence between us grew heavy. I wanted to break it, to dispel the tension, but found myself lost for words. As we passed the second floor, then the third, I felt the atmosphere thicken, my initial unease turning into genuine fear. Suddenly, the elevator jerked to a stop, not at my floor, but between floors. The lights flickered before stabilizing. Panic gripped me, but before I could say anything, the man finally moved. He turned his head slightly towards me, and I could feel his eyes on me, though I couldn't see them. Nice night, isn't it? He whispered his voice low and unsettling. I swallowed hard, my mouth dry. Yeah, lovely, I replied, trying to keep my voice steady. The elevator started moving again, but now I was truly afraid. What did this man want? As we finally reached my floor, I took a deep breath, readying myself to sprint out. But as the doors opened, the man's hand shot out, blocking the doorway. You shouldn't be alone at this hour, he said, his tone menacing. Without thinking, I ducked under his arm and ran out of the elevator, my heart pounding. I heard his footsteps behind me, heavy and quick. 
He was following me. I raced down the corridor, my keys already in hand. I could hear him gaining on me, his breaths harsh and ragged. I fumbled with my keys, cursing under my breath as I struggled to find the right one. Just as I slid my key into the lock, I felt him right behind me, his presence like a cold shadow. I swung the door open and rushed inside, slamming it shut and locking it in one fluid motion. I leaned against it, my breath coming in gasps, listening. Thud. 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 He was pounding on my door, each hit making my heart jump. I slid to the floor, pulling my phone from my pocket with trembling hands. Help, please, there's someone trying to break into my apartment, I whispered into the phone, the operator's calm voice in my ear as I gave my address. The pounding continued, relentless and terrifying. I crawled away from the door, my eyes fixed on it, expecting it to give way at any moment. But then, sirens cut through the night, growing louder. The pounding stopped abruptly. I crawled to the peephole and peeked through. The man was gone, leaving the hallway empty and silent once more. The police arrived minutes later, taking my statement and checking the area. They found the elevator still on my floor, the security camera inside showing the man leaving just before they arrived. The footage was grainy, his face never fully visible. In the days that followed, I learned that there had been similar incidents in the area, strangers following lone residents into their buildings late at night. The police increased their patrols, but the man who followed me wasn't caught. I was left with a deep sense of unease that lingered long after the incident. I avoided the elevator at night, taking the stairs instead, my once comforting night routines replaced with cautious checks and double locked doors. Reflecting on that night, I realized how quickly safety can be shattered, a reminder that danger can appear where and when you least expect it. I was more vigilant, more aware of my surroundings, and less trusting of quiet nights. My encounter with the stranger in the elevator changed me. It was a stark lesson in the fragility of security and the importance of listening to one's instincts. I no longer felt invincible in my urban bubble but rather, more connected to the shared vulnerability that comes with city living. Each night, as I lay in bed, I found myself listening for the sounds of the elevator, a once mundane noise now a reminder of the night I ran for my life down the cold, silent corridor of my apartment building.